returned once again today to do a stream of Jojo Part 5 Golden Wind. We're good to go, we're good to go, we're good to go. So yes, you have returned to episode 35 of Jojo Part 5 Golden Wind. And as we know, episode 34 was very interesting actually. It kind of was a, a pseudo sequel to Freaky Friday. Which um, which actually is even funnier because it airs on a Friday. So, <laughs> hello! So it's almost as if it's kind of like, it's just... It's just, it just writes itself, as they say. <laughs> it's almost, too, it's almost too convenient, actually, when I think about it. It's almost like the, it's almost like the week beforehand with it being National Donut Day, as well. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, back on topic, the whole thing was actually really, actually quite interesting as well. We actually got to learn more about the Arrow and everything like that. Actually, what's really going on with the Arrow itself? Also, the Diavaruno as well. Diavaruno. Can't can't go wrong with the other Uno. That's also that's also a massive plus. Hello to the whole entire thing. So yes, I mean, um, we'll have to wait until after this in this episode. It's, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. So anyway, that's actually important to actually go live. So live for episode play five of the Golden Wind. Of Jojo Part Five Golden Wind, I should say. And as I say every single stream, with that, I believe we're good to go. But are we though? That is the burning question I ask, I ask afterwards. On that front, I certainly are. On this front, uh, oh, I, I can't wait. I can't wait to, for this episode. <laughs> I cannot wait. I want to see what happens. I want to see what's going down, JoJo, this week. It's happening in Freaky Fire Part 2. So, anyways, actually, start the thing in three, two, one. So, I start the thing absolutely now. <laughs> and Bruno's passed out. Bruno's very much passed out. I mean, what what more can you ask for in life? Um, <laughs> I mean, the thing with uh, the other Bruno is the fact if Abakio survived, then uh, Abakio would have actually actually changed blades with Bruno, and then you wouldn't have been like, boy, that's the perfect combo. You wouldn't have been complaining at all. You'd be like, yes, Araki, yes, their productions. Thank you for the food. But alas, as I said last week, someone put a goddamn fist through him, so we're not gonna get that anytime soon. It's an alternate reality, probably, but not here. Oh no, it's probably actually it's probably something out there. Hello, that actually does in theory um, give us a Bacchio and Bruno. Who knows? I don't. I wish that's the case, because then both husbands are both together. So that's just what more can you ask for? I also have forgotten. We must we must partake in we must partake in the thank you of the actual good up Bruno curtains, as well because. It's um, it's getting to the end. We've got to be like, good luck, um, Bruno Curtains. Thank you. Ooh, they're keeping it going. They're keeping it going. Ooh, ooh. They're productions. Ooh. Oh, thank you. I'm glad someone actually noticed a Mies from the background. I wanted to get a Bach here, but I didn't have him, sadly. <laughs> or Bruno, for that matter, actually. I can't believe we've been JoJo twice in a week, twice in one week. We've been JoJo twice on a twice on a twice on a tr god god damn twice on a trot. There we go. <laughs> Said the word correctly. That is twice on a trot. How do you make Diavolo hotter? Bruno. Oh, 
Poor Paul the ref. Poor dude. Bruno lives, boys. Bruno lives! The Bruno boy survives. You can't Jojo to Jojo. It's against the law. Everyone knows it's, it's it's written in the it's written in the dictionary. You cannot Jojo the Jojo with a Jojo. It's against the law. I mean, can um, can Mies actually catch a break at this point? <laughs> what do you think about it? He literally just he literally picked up his hand and went, you know what, I'm out. <laughs> He's like, I'm out of here, guys. Adios. Arrivederci. Essentially, basically, they just get Jojo'd. <laughs> how's, how does how does one stop the Jojo? You you have to you have to become the Jojo. Uh oh. They're not Bruno Boy, but also Bruno Boy's woken up. They actually did the pose as well. They did the pose. I mean, if all due respect, you can't still shoot Bruno. Still against the law, technically speaking. Jesus. Jesus.
Oh, don't do this to me now. Do not do this to me now. Do not bring a Bakio back into this. It's almost as if their production's just like, you know something, a Bucky-O's dead boy, you're like, I know, stop reminding me, okay? My heart is still broken. Oh no. This is tense. This is tense. They're already nailing this actually perfectly, to be honest. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Welcome back to the point I most feared as well. But they've done it even more so in the anime, actually, spe especially speaking. This hurt even more. Oh man, they've got to add in the tears as well. They've got to add in the tears. Can I, can I like, get off this train?
You know what's even more painful is the fact that I had that, had that whole enticing beforehand about him going to school. I was just like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? That's against the rules. Yeah, that's the thing, because in the manga, you, just, you, you didn't have enough time to actually kind of process everything that was going on. It just happened. You're like, holy crap. But in the anime, it really hurts. It really does hurt. Oh, come on. You did not. Absolutely not. Oh. 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 They really just, um... They really did, they really did that. They really, they, 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 they just... They just did that. If I recall, it's actually in the manga at all. You don't see that scene at all in the manga. You don't see Fugo's reaction, or kind of Fugo walking, because why? Is my question. Oh man, their productions. You're both a beautiful studio and also kind of just a massive, um, a massive. I don't. Know, I don't even know. I don't even know the word. <laughs> <sighs> I'm gonna go cut up into a ball and cry. I just, um, I want to get off this train. It also kind of proves how powerless the actual stand users are in this part as well, technically speaking. It's morbidly depressing when you think about it. They've never given kind of like the godlike power level, but if you get what I mean, there's always been like this idea that there's actually probably a way out, but in this case, no. Wow, that hurt even more. 
all these things hurt in the manga, but in the anime, holy crap. Man, I just wanna just wanna cry right now. I must say, even though this show this show and this episode's painful, this episode's incredible. Like for every single like um perspective, this episode's incredible. I've always said it, the real MVP of this whole entire part is the turtle. Oh man. I just wanna, um... I just want to, uh, <laughs> get off the ball and cry for a bit. I'm not gonna lie, that whole entire, um, last part was just absolutely painful. But it's just one of those things, like, um, it hurts even more. Because in the manga, the whole entire section with um, the Nuncha happens in an instant. It's the whole entire point of um, King Crimson. It's the fact that it happens in an instant. So you have no way to actually find out how the hell it happened or what the hell is happening. It just happens. You're kind of like, oh crap. I remember reading it and being like, what? Really? Uh, the same thing happened to Bakio originally as well. Because I was like, holy crap, they just killed a Bakio. That's, 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 that's not right. You can't do that. And the same thing happened with Nuncha. I was just like, what the hell is happening here? But then the anime kind of hits it even more by kind of making you go, look, at this character wants to actually have this future. Well, it's now taken away from him completely. And it kind of takes the whole entire instance, makes him like a, a whole entire year, practically a pain. Like, because he's, oh, Requiem's there now, actually. The more I just realized, was Requiem there last week? I just never noticed that Requiem last week. But yeah, it turns that whole entire thing into even more painful because of that whole entire interaction and him going to Trish, I'll, I'll protect you as well until the until the very end, and then it happens. But you don't actually have that you, in the in the anime. It's like you don't have that time to process it because again, the ambience adds to the whole entire fear factor. What's going on there? It was really well handled, really well done because it, every every single infinite detail added to the overall kind of Im impact of that scene. It was really well done. Just, it was goddamn painful. Well, Diablo's an arsehole. Hot arsehole, but an arsehole, an arsehole nonetheless. 
I just want I want Diavaruno, not Diavolo. I want Diavaruno only. He's a, he's a good boy. Diavolo is a bad boy. Still hot though. But yeah, I mean. So, oh boy, that was an episode and a half when you think about it. Like, um, I didn't expect them to add in the whole thing with Fugo as well. I was just like, I was just like, Day Productions, you've hurt me, but then you just want to kind of just kick me while I'm down. All right, I know your game now. This isn't nice. I want off. I don't want to be on this train anymore. I can't. I can't be on this train. I need feelings. I need. I need my heart still. You just can't be doing this. Why are you doing this? Why are you putting Fugo in there? It's against the law. You just put Fugo in there, didn't you? I just. Just. Pfft, pfft. just all round. All round. As I said last. I said episode ten of um, Sarah's on my. That's what I think. That's what I think. Good episode though. Very good episode. Yeah, the Fugo part just hurt so much because the whole thing with him beforehand saying, look, I don't mind him calling me dumb. I was like, wow, Dairy Productions. What else do you want to do to me at this point to actually come at me full even worse? What do you want to do? Is there anything else in there? I don't know. But I have to wait and see. Because I don't know at this point. But yeah, one other thing to know about this about whole entire part, even if you know the events, this still goddamn hurts. Because the anime does something more than what an adaptation of manga should actually really do. It makes everything just hurt ten times even more than it really does. I expect, I expect this from goddamn um, Sangatsu or something like that. But Jojo is just my heart. It's destroyed. Oh man, it's just it was just the whole entire thing of Giorno kind of come to realization that he's powerless. He really is. He's has no way to actually kind of in a way. I say everyone because this whole entire thing happens in an instant. They can't be everywhere at every one time. It's impossible. Otherwise, it's basically a Deus Ex Machina at that point. Like it's, it's he can't be everywhere at one time. He, ha he has to be um, he has to be where he is, which I actually kind of like because it then downplays the whole entirety of what a stand stands for in a way, pardon the pun. Like in a way because. It wasn't as if beforehand they were given godlike personas. They weren't given like, well, look at these guys. They they can't be taken down. It was it was this idea that in the end the actual protagonist will actually win the fight, but it's never been a sense that they're always kind of being godlike entities in a way, and like like in other kind of shows and medium that would actually kind of otherwise like kind of portray characters in somewhat of a kind of like godlike persona. Here is not kind of the case too much, but. So it's the idea that they will win in the end, but I like how in part five, especially now, because it kind of didn't, well, it kind of wasn't the same at the beginning. Because at the beginning, it was kind of like John the Cannon very save wounds and do all those kind of things. The, the the whole thing happened with Bruno, but then when the Bruno thing happens, it kind of makes you go, yeah, they're completely powerless. What's actually going on here? They can't do anything. They they, they can only they can only do what they can, and John's powerless to what's actually happening around here. And it's actually kind of depressing. And um, it makes Jonah kind of to be this very multifaceted kind of character. The character doesn't really feel all these emotions of kind of going through grief, kind of going through the idea that he knows he can't save the people he cares about and everything like that. He actually has to kind of move forward. And it's still even more painful that the fact that he actually had to leave him, he actually had to leave him there behind actually kind of so he wouldn't get hurt. But then actually kind of, kind of leaves him a vigil as well. It's one of those things that it it tells you how much a multifaceted character Jonah actually kind of is. And for that reason, it kind of is like, he's probably, it's probably tie number one with the best Jojo, I think. It's still really hard to actually kind of kind of do the whole t tier list when it comes to Jojo's, but he's probably tie number one at the moment, I'd imagine. Like, he's, he's just too good. I love him to bits because he's just so... He actually has everything a character should have already have. The way that he went from stoic to actually kind of grieving, it was actually kind of really well done. It was actually very organic in a way. He very much starts off like a like a protagonist in a JoJo part, but then as time goes on, he kind of becomes more sto kind of kind of becomes a lot, lot less stoic. And this episode actually kind of proved that whole entire thing, and it actually kind of then proves to you like no one's safe, like no one is, like everyone can in theory be in danger. Like even though afterwards it's kind of played off the whole entire thing with the um, policeman, it's actually kind of played off to actually kind of soften the blow of what happened beforehand. It still kind of makes you wonder like anyone could in theory be Diablo like at that point in time, like anyone could in theory be him or who or what else is actually really going on here. It's actually kind of more terrifying. Because you just don't know where the attack can come from. It's one of the things that it proves. It kind of proves very perfectly Diab Diablo's power, power, powerfulness, prowess. In a way, it's kind of the better word to use. Prowess. It's kind of because 
he can be he can be anyone or anywhere. Like the whole entire part proved it beforehand. We didn't see Diablo before. He could be anyone. He could be anywhere, any given time. We just didn't know where he was. I mean, the whole thing with La Squadra kind of proved that whole entire thing perfectly. That he can be anywhere, be anyone. You just don't know who he looks like. Same thing kind of applies with this part as well. At this very one point, he can be anyone. It's just kind of like yeah this this isn't fun at all <laughs> this isn't fun like beforehand um there's always a sense that yeah the the antennas actually comes out they fight and then it, that's that's that there's always that whole entire thing character mind through kind of perish in the meantime but that's also it's also kind of one of those things but part five really ups the ante when it comes to what a part can actually even really do towards the end so yeah, I wonder what else they can do with Diablo's character as well because they, I liked how they actually didn't really flesh out the whole thing of multiple, the multiple personality disorder because it's a very fascinating part of Diablo's character, this whole entire psyche he actually doesn't really have. So I actually kind of want to see what they can in free do with him to actually kind of continue on because it actually might be very, very interesting. But yeah, all round, very good episode. I mean, I want my heart back. That's completely broken because the whole thing with um, that nuncher before, I was like, yeah, just <sighs> don't do that. And then Fuga after was like, ooh, don't do that as well. That's just not right. So yeah, that is me done for today. So as always, if you have enjoyed this whole entire as a whole on Twitch, then do leave a follow on Twitch because indeed it's something quiet. But if you have enjoyed it here on YouTube and you do want to leave a like, then do leave a like because indeed it's something quiet. But if you have enjoyed it here on YouTube, actually you want to stay a bit longer. Uh, say a bit longer then doing free leave a sub on youtube because it needs to be quite a bit she have enjoyed it here on youtube actually want to say a bit longer after the whole entire point then doing free follow me on twitter or jump discord as well both for tony streams and live streams i do as well but until next time, until next time episode 36 of jojo part 5 gone on wind see you guys later bye for now